Holy crap! Dead guy! Oh, and a nice old chainsaw. Doesn't look like he'll be needing this. Come on! This must be a pretty good saw. Guy didn't want to let go of it. Well, I'm gonna take this baby down to Terrell, see if he knows anything about it. It's pretty old, heavy. Maybe he can get it going for me. Thanks for the saw, buddy. Toodaloo! <laughs> Check out this old saw I just picked up. Maybe you know something about it. Or you can help me get it going. Flippers, where'd you get that saw from? That thing's really old. I got it from some bony old man. He really didn't want to let it go, but I got it away from him. That saw ain't stolen, is it? I wouldn't say I stole it. More like I inherited it from somebody that's not gonna need it anymore. Yeah, I'll take a look at it. You know those antique chainsaws can be kind of expensive to fix. I hope you've got deep pockets. Oh, that's all right, Terrell. I also found a wallet full of cash, so I think I'm pretty good to go. What Slippers brought in is a 1956 Eclipse Wasp Pulp Master. 1956, man, this saw is old and heavy. 22 pounds is what this weighs. Now it looks like everything's there, so we should be able to get it running. You could put anywhere between a 16 and a 24 inch bar on this old chainsaw. And the chain it uses is half inch pitch. So it's got some big meaty chain on it, which they don't use anymore. It's got a Power Products motor on it which is like a Tecumish. It's an AH-47. It's 77 cc's this saw, which is about three and a half horsepower. And it would run at 4,500 RPM as the top speed on this saw. Not very fast. Old technology. Probably chew through that log faster than this thing would cut. It uses what's called a ribbon air filter element, which we'll look at later when I take this off. And it uses 16 to 1 fuel mixture. So the first thing we're going to want to do is check and see if it's got spark. Now the on off switch on his back. And I'll take the plug out. Might be easier to pull. Got no spark. Oh, there it goes. Spark a little bit. There it comes. Oh, now it's sparking. This thing's got points and condensers, so we're gonna pull it apart and clean the points and see if we can get better spark. Now, the next thing we're gonna wanna do is check for compression. We'll do it three times. So we got about 90 pounds. It should probably start with that much compression. All right, let's take this recoil cover off and pop the flywheel and Take a look at the points. Looks like it's all regular screws with a screwdriver. This one broke loose. Let's see if we can get this one loose. Now if you got tough hardware like that, that won't come out, I got a trick for getting it out. You need a hammer and a punch. This is an old trick I used to use on motorcycles to get them Phillips heads out. Kind of shocks it. So remember that. And you can 
beat the Phillips or the thread blade back in there. See? Cracks them loose. Looks like only three. Oh! Oh, whoa! Got a 1956 dead mouse in there. Hey! Hey! Oh, it's just nest. That could be part of our problem. Looks like he liked chewing on that that kill wire. All right, so I have to clean all this out of here. To disconnect this kill wire, I'm going to have to remove this switch. So there's a little tab here. And bend it out of the way. A little locking tab. And then undo this nut. And we can take the switch out of the cover. Cleaned out most of that mouse nest that was in there. And then the original wire here, I think I'm gonna disconnect it from the switch and then I'll put some heat shrink tubing over it. That way I can preserve the original wire. Now we're gonna pull the flywheel. Got 11 16 socket here for that nut. And this is left-handed thread. So you gotta put your wrench on tightening. Pull that off. See? It's left handed. Like me. So I don't have a knockoff tool, but maybe my Briggs knockoff tool might work. If not, you can always put the nut flush if you don't have a knockoff tool. Put some pressure under there and whack it in the middle. Let me see if I can find my Briggs knockoff tool. So this is a Briggs and Scranton flywheel knockoff tool. And see, it's got a piece of brass in there, soft metal. And that fits right over there, but doesn't go all the way to the bottom. And then I'll give me a little pry bar and we'll put a little pressure on it and give it a good sharp blow and see if we pop that flywheel. So I'm gonna pivot right off of this screw here because I don't want to pry on this magnesium. Did I mention that this chainsaw is made out of magnesium? It's not made out of uh, aluminum, it's magnesium. So I'll put a little pressure on it, give it a quick, sharp blow right in the center. And there's your dinner. There's your dinner, popped right off. All right, now let's clean this up a little bit and then take a look at them points. Let's pop off this points cover. Let's lift up that clip, turn that to the side. And if you notice on the cover, it says gauge 20 thousandths. So you can use this little tab to set the points. And you can also use it to Work the gasket off. Oh, look at in there. Looks, looks dirty. Now those look like just standard Tecumish points. Let's pop them out of there and see how bad they're fitted. Maybe we could just clean them up and put them back in. These are 11 32nd nuts. You know that 11 32nd wrench you got in your toolbox? and you hardly ever use it, now you can use it. So let's pull those, those two wires off there. Take this other nut off. A washer. Take that 
coil wire off. Take our screwdriver. And if you notice, our condenser is captured underneath. And there's a nut under there. So this is our condenser. And I highly doubt I got a condenser for this thing. I don't have too many parts laying around from 1956. Well, we're more than likely going to have to use this over. Now let's, let's pop this out. So they use that point screw to also hold the condenser in place. And these points, they look like they're pretty well shot. Let me look around and see if I might have some. So the old 30547A to Cummish points are the same. And I happen to have a new old stock, old set of to Cummish points. These are better than the new ones. The new ones are kind of made a little differently and they seem kind of cheap. So I got a good original old set of points. Another thing you could do, and then I know what you're gonna say. Terrell, why didn't you do it? Why didn't you show us how to put that on there? Because it takes a lot of time to do this. You can put one of these Nova 2 or Atom Ignition systems which eliminate the points of condenser. The only problem with using one of these is you have to mess with the timing. And if you notice, there's a screw here so you could loosen this and you could actually turn this timing. So it would be a lot of putting this module on, putting it all back together, running it, See how it runs. If it runs like it's crappy, like the timing's off, take it all apart, loosen that, turn it a little bit one way, lock it down, put it all back together, try it again, and then you may have to take this apart and put it together several times until you get the timing where you need it. It's not like you could just loosen that and reach up underneath there and turn it. Well, I guess you could, actually. You could get up under there if we had this kind of tight and turn it. But I don't want to mess with all that. That's a lot of farting around. These points will last long. It's not like somebody's going to use this saw on a daily basis. It's not practical. It's heavy. It's an antique. It's a wall hanger. This is something that would be hanging on the wall in like Chili's or Applebee's or TGI Friday's. So I'm gonna clean this out in here. I'm gonna take this wick out. I'm gonna clean it with some carb spray. Try to clean it as best I can. And then I'm gonna soak it with a little penetrating oil and put it back in. So I'm gonna clean this out with some brake cleaner. Get it all nice and spiffed up in here and then we'll go ahead and reassemble it. Got it all nice and clean in there. So now we gotta do is install our new set of points. Simply just stick them in, same way you took them out. Here's our screw. Here's our condenser with the nut, which we gotta hold underneath there. And there's a ground wire that comes off the coil right here. Get that over the screw. And 
Oop. Now this is going to be a little tricky with this nut. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a drop of crazy glue on there to hold that for me. That'll make it a little simpler. So I put a very small amount of crazy glue on there and I put the screw in so it's lined up. Now it's holding it for me. So we'll put the screw back in. Put our ground wire on. That ground wire under there. And then we'll go ahead put the condenser back in. And just snug it down. Now the condenser fits just like this in this little area, long ways. It only goes that one way like that. So see, there's that condenser in that position right there. So now we can hook our wires back up. So remember this one was on there first. Then the washer. Then one of the nuts. There's our 11 30 seconds wrench. Snug that up. Make sure that's down. Make sure that sucker's down all the way. That points. Now we can snug it up. Don't go crazy. Now we can hook up the kill wire and the condenser wire. There's not many threads left. So that old set of points had a longer stud on there. So we're going to eliminate one of them nuts. So since this is kill wire's got a little hook on it, I'm gonna hook that in there. And then I'm gonna put the condenser wire on. And then I'll put the nut on. Make sure this is down. Stay down. Down. Stay down. Stay down. Now we can tighten that up. So there was a little bit of a difference. Don't go crazy. Okay. Make sure none of your wires are touching ground, they're supposed to be up against this plastic. Here's that little wick that keeps the, uh, the lobe on the crankshaft oiled. I cleaned it as best I could. Now I just got some penetrating oil, some spray in a can. So I just put that in there. And then we'll stick this back in. Now we want to turn the crankshaft to where the points are at their widest opening. And you'll see that little lobe on there. See that little lobe? So that's where they're at their widest point. And then we can take that cover that's got that 20 thousandths gauge on it. We can stick it in there. 
so we can get our 20 thousandths. Now I can go ahead and tighten that screw. So we got our points set, we got our 20 thousandths. I'm gonna close them up and we're gonna clean them with a piece of paper. I just took a post-it note, kind of wrapped it up, thickened it up. Now we got it nice and clean. Now we can put our points cover gasket back on. And our points cover. And our points cover clip. Uh-oh, I hear sirens. Hope they're not coming for me. So this clip fits down in here. And then you turn it. And it just fits right in this little slot here. That's it. That's all there's to it. Now let's put the flywheel back on. See what kind of spark we got now. Hurry up before I go to jail. Clean the inside of the flywheel real good. Now this coil looks like that standard to come as coil. So if you had to put a coil on it, looks like the ones they use on the four stroke engine. That on, put our starter cup, star washer. Look, it's got notches in there. In case you broke the recoil, you could wrap a rope around it. And then get my flywheel nut. My left-handed flywheel nut. And then I went ahead and fixed the, the kill wire. Put some heat shrink around it. I can hook that back up. I need a smaller screwdriver. Here it is. I knew I had one. So before we put the recoil cover back on, let's see if it's got good sparks. So I got the socket in my drill, and in, in order to spin it the right way, we want it on reverse. That good spark. It's not intermittent. I'll spin it as slow as I can. Well, let's put it together and see if we can get it to lick off. I'll put the cover on. Put the kill switch back in. Put that on, and then we'll see if somebody wants to spend some money. Money's calling! Now this recoil was kind of sticky, and it wasn't catching all the time. So I'm gonna spray some, some lubricant on the spring. Stupid straw coming off. I hate them straws. Oh, that's better. Needed a little lubricant. But the little dogs that catch really weren't kicking out all that great. And if I remember, there's like little fiber washers under here. And they might just be glazed up. Let me pop off this clip. And then there's a spring. And then there's this washer. And then here's one of those fiber washers. And then this comes out, this dogs. 
And there should be another one under here. Yeah. And there's another washer. So I'm going to try to sand that glaze off of there and see if that helps. Because it needs like friction, a little bit of friction to help kick them, them paws or dogs out. Okay, I figured out why this recoil isn't grabbing and that these paws are wore out on one side. So if you push on these springs, this little keeper comes out and you could take these off and flip them around. So that's what I'm gonna do, take these off and flip them around. And remember, this has gotta go back on that recoil like this. If you put it back on like this, it ain't gonna work right. So that's how it's gotta look. So I'll go ahead and take these little keepers and springs off and flip these around and it should grab. Put that back in. Fiber washer, metal washer, spring, a little cover, and this E or C clip. There, there's my dinner. Seem to be kicking out now. Now this was the plug that was in the chainsaw, J13Y. But it's supposed to take a J8J, which they don't make anymore unless you can find new old stock. So the one that replaces the J8J is the J8C. So I'm gonna check the gap. I'm gonna gap it at 30 thousandths and then we're gonna put the plug in it and we're gonna shoot it with a little dinosaur juice and see what happens. I'll loosen this. Take the screw out and let's take this cover off. Now this is that ribbon air filter. Look at that. Look at what they use for an air filter. They call this a ribbon air filter. And I can tell this is, this is broke here. So I may have to tap that in and maybe put some taro putty on there to fix that. Here's the choke. And then it looks like it's got a shut off here, which looks like a standard shut off which they still make. It looks like it's leaking even. And surprisingly, the fuel tank is pretty clean. And then this looks like an adjustment. Your high speed adjustment here. That's a good sign. Looks like gas leaking out of somewhere. Looks like this valve. I'm gonna replace this shutoff valve. So I'm gonna use this here rotary cutoff valve or shutoff valve. There's the part number, 8546, and I'm gonna replace the fuel line. Add that thing in there. What's uh? Oh, some nastiness in there. Before I go tearing the carburetor apart, let's try that. Hmm. 
Oh, there's a little screen in here. Where's that screwdriver I had? There it is. Looks like fuel from 1956. Maybe we'll get lucky. Before we go pulling the carburetor apart. Let's put the cutoff valve, new piece of fuel line. We'll clean this little screen. Put some dinosaur juice in it. See what happens. All right, put a new piece of fuel line on. Got that shutoff valve in there. Rinsed out the tank a couple of times. And then I put some uh, 50 to 1 synthetic mix in there. But Terrell, you said it was 16 to 1. You're going to burn up that chainsaw. The new modern synthetic two-cycle oil is like a multi-ratio oil. It'll work in anything from 16 to 1 up to 50 to 1. I don't think that's true, Terrell. I don't think you know what you're talking about. I opened that up and flushed her out a little bit. All right, let's see if it'll run on its own. screw on the top a little bit. Try that again. I guess I'm gonna have to pull the carburetor apart. Two seven sixteenths headed nuts right there. And then I'm sure this has got a Z bend on it. Nope, it's got a hook. Well, that's kinda crazy to try to get off. Better if it was a Z band, Z band, Z band. Oh, I see. Take this idle screw out. There we go. Huh. Crafty. All right, let's take the bowl off. See what's waiting for us in there. This is a Tillotson. I know you're all worried about that fuel I put in there too, aren't you? You're gonna ruin that saw. You're gonna ruin that not multi-ratio fuel like you said. It's full synthetic oil. It'll oil this old saw that doesn't even run at high RPM. Trust me, I've been doing it a long time. Never had one burn up because I use that 50 to 1 mix in there. Oh, 
This thing don't want to come apart and I don't want to wreck it. Fart. Just like another grain. Let's try this. Is this holding it together? Is this like a nozzle? Oh yeah. Got all kinds of little brass screws on here. Let's take this high speed out. Maybe this is the problem. Ah! Now we've released it. Okay, this little screw holds the float in place. There's the needle. I was going to say, isn't there a needle? I think if I give it a good scrubbing, put it back together, it should run. Now, you never want to blow air. You know, when I was taking these out and letting the fuel run through, you never want to blow air back through there because that's how you can collapse the float by putting that compressed air in there. I think if we just clean this nozzle, clean this out real good, put it back together, it'll probably run. I'm gonna take this out now. Man, that was in there tough. What's waiting for us under there? Ah, there's another like net nozzle or jet down in there. I don't know if this will fit in there. It does. I don't want to wreck it. Oh. You got to really push hard on this stuff. That's the trick. Make sure it's nice and you're pushing down on it nice and square and hard. Get it to crack loose. Aha! Another nozzle. All right. Let's ultrasound and clean it. How do you like my shirt? Got my hero on there, Carl Childers. You know what he always said in the movie? Gotta put some gas in it. Now for those of you who saw our ultrasonic cleaner video, a lot of you had some good ideas. And the one idea I really liked was putting the parts in a jar. That's a good idea instead of that basket. And then another uh, comments were about using gasoline. So I got gasoline in this jar. So we're gonna turn on the ultrasonic cleaner and we're gonna stick this jar in there. So yeah, this large scale ultrasonic cleaner that holds three and a half gallons, I could just put regular tap water in there and just put the carburetor in one of them mason jars with some gasoline or some dish soap and put it in there. That'll save you a bunch of money. That's a good idea. If I had something big, like a big four-barrel carburetor, well then I would just fill the whole thing with, with uh, cleaning solvent. I don't think I'd fill it with gasoline, but gasoline in the jar should be all right. I wanna see how well that's gonna work. 
Well, it sounded like a good idea filling the jar with gasoline and putting it in the ultrasonic cleaner, but as you can tell, it really didn't do anything. It really didn't work. But it sounded like a good idea. So I'm gonna go back to what I always do, and that's water and dish soap. I do like the idea of putting it in the jar though. And as you can see, I just got regular tap water in here. And off we go. This don't fit too good. We'll lay it on the side. There's my dinner. So the cheap dish soap worked good. Cleaned it up nice. Didn't do that good of a job on the float, but I could take a, a scotch Sprite pad and kind of clean that up a little more. So now we're ready to reassemble the carburetor and put it back on the saw. All right, I'm gonna polish up this uh, seat for the needle and seat, and I'm gonna use my Q-tip and some carb spray trick. Now I can drop the needle in put the float down on it over the top of the needle and then stick this pin back in All right, there's a little plug that covers where the end of the needle is. I'll stick that back in. And here's our carburetor. Here's our nozzle, all nice and clean. So there's a hole here on the side. That's where the fuel comes in from the float bowl. So I wanna make sure that's clear. And then we had this screw that went in there. So that kind of meters the fuel. So here's this little float bowl drain plug that we need to reinstall in here. So remember this little hole on the side? That's for this. This is, that's like I said, that's our metering. Because if you look, when this goes on, this goes on like that. That's why I was having a hard time getting the bowl off because the needle was in there. See, that goes in to there. So this is what adjusts our amount of fuel for our high speed. So that's how that works. So now I'll just go ahead and put the bowl back on. Put the four screws back in. So now I got my fiber washer. Now I can reinstall the high speed screw. Now lastly, I'll install this nozzle. So I got my torch tip cleaner, and I just want to double check. Kind of rod that out, make sure there's no obstructions in there. And then there's a little cross drilled hole 
here. Make sure that's clear. And I'll go ahead and spray it off with a little carbon spray and we'll put this back in. And we can reinstall the carburetor. Fire it up, fire it up. Cleaned it up a little with the Scotch Brite too. All right, now, I never messed with this screw, so. Get a bigger screwdriver. That's a half. It's gotta have some kind of packing in there. Size is that three eight? Get this all freed up. So I'm just going to back it out some. And I'll just adjust it from there once I get it back on. All right, I can turn it. Okay, now let's put it back on the chainsaw. Take out this idle screw. Put it over the studs. And put our idle screw back in. Don't give me much room in here. Now with octopus fingers, tent tentacle-like fingers, to get these nuts started, and we'll tighten it down. I got this all reassembled. I'm probably gonna weld this aluminum piece since it's cracked. I'll get that welded back up. But for now, let's fire it up, fire it up, fire it up, fire it up. too high. Well, let me back that down a little and let me open up this high speed because I think it just ran out of gas. Well, let me open it one turn. Let's see what happens now. Now that I know which way the choke is. with the air cleaner on it. So it don't have a trigger lock, 
So I gotta sit here and put my knee on the gas tank and hold the throttle wide open with my right hand and pull with my left. Now what I failed to mention on these old two-strokers is this runs on a reed valve. It's got a reeds in there. And I forgot to check them reeds because if them reeds aren't sealing, it's not. It's going to affect the way it runs also. So I'm going to pull this block off so I can look at them reeds. So this is a reed block. And you can see the reeds are open. They're supposed to be like that down so on a lot of older two cycle equipment they would have screws here so you could take the reeds out and put new reeds in but this is all riveted together so what I'm gonna have to do is grind that off so I can get the reeds off because I'm sure I can't just go up in my parts room and find a reed block for a 60 some year old chainsaw it's not like these parts are readily available i do have some new old stock parts that i got from my brother Farrell. i'll probably just take a quick look in there just to make sure there's not something in there um if not you know i'm not going to go on ebay or somewhere and try to find this part I'm just going to grind them off, take these reeds off, bend them so they sit flat, and then I'm just going to drill and tap and put some little screws in there. I dug through them new old stock parts and I did find three brand new gaskets. They're old. These bags are all, look at that, paper's all brittle. So, now that I got the old gasket off, you can see how the reeds aren't sealing. See, they gotta be like that. They can't be sticking up. It's gonna affect the way it runs. So what do we got to lose, 60 year old chainsaw? Take a pair of side cutters here. So I can get that off. I'll try to get these reeds off without wrecking them. Okay, I had to grind the little the little nubs off. And I can take a razor blade. Now I can get them off. And there's our reeds. So since they're sticking up, I could probably just flip them over. And they should sit flat. You know what, I'm just gonna bend them. I'm just gonna bend them down. That way I know they're gonna fit tight. fit tight. That's what you got to do. You just got to tweak them.
All right, now I'm gonna make sure this is nice and flat. I'm gonna do my old, you know, my old hillbilly machine pad. And I think I'll do. I'm just gonna drill a 1 8 hole in there, and I'm just gonna put a pop rivet in there. They're better than they were. So it was the reeds. I fixed that reed block, put it back together, and it ran. I just had a fine tune in the carburetor. So here, let me start it up and show you. you like to operate that noisy thing back in the day? Heavy, noisy, oh, got a manual oiler, don't have an automatic oiler, so as you're cutting, you gotta pump this thing, keep the chain oiled. So, now I'll take the chain off and sharpen it. We'll get slippers over here and see how it, uh, see how it cuts, this old 60-year-old saw. It's the wasp and I got stung. If you want to own a piece of Terrell vintage equipment, you can own this saw. All you have to do is go to eBay, type in Eclipse Wasp Chainsaw, and you can bid on this saw. It'll be up for one week. And if you're the lucky bidder, if you want us to autograph it, just leave us a message. And there's your dinner. Woo! Eclop win! Bop, beep, boop, bop, saw! Eclop, eclipsed. Eclops, eclipsed. Wasp. I got stung by the wasp. Okay, Clippers, it's all ready to go. All right, well, uh, what all did you do to it? What all I do to it? I did a lot to it. I put a new set of points in it. I fixed the recoil. I cleaned out the carburetor. I fixed this cover that was broke, welded it. I took my 
jewelry engraving machine and engraved the word choke on it because I was having trouble figuring out which way was choke and which way was off. I made a wing nut for the air cleaner so you didn't have to use a screwdriver to get this off. I also made this block here, this square block, because they had some kind of metal tab. I had it over here, here it is. They had this stupid metal tab and the two bolts were right next to each other and it was hard to get in there. So I made this little metal block, welded a nut on the back, so now it's easier to get on and off, plus it clamps this on there. What else did I do? I fixed the manual oiler. I put a new plug in it. I changed the fuel line. I also cleaned up the bar. And then the last thing I did was sharpen it. So it's all ready to go. Get that wallet out. Well, uh... I just wanted to chain sharpen. I could have did all this other stuff myself. So. Get that wallet off, slipper! I, I, I got it with me, all right? Can I at least see it in action before I pay? Sure. We could take it outside and do some chopping on that test log I got out there. Oh, all right, well, awesome. I want to see that piece of wood out there get stung by the wasp. And then you're going to pay off. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Got it right here. Flippers, let's fire it up. Sure cut slow, but it does cut. Slow and steady wins the race. Yeah, well, slow and steady with this old saw, this thing is heavy. You better have some big arms. Now pay up. Uh, all right, fine. I knew you stole this saw. Well, he looks pretty upset, so. You, you might want to give it back to him. Me? You're the one that stole it. You give him his saw back. Uh, why does this always happen to me? Uh, all right, here's your saw. Oh, man. Yeah, I, I got the wallet here too. Here's the wallet. Uh, okay. Well, I just wanted the chain sharpened. I could have did all this other stuff myself. I wasn't really doing it. Get that wallet off, slippers! <laughs> I did all this other stuff myself. <laughs> Jumping all around. Oh, there it goes. Jumping around. <laughs> 